Hallelujah. Glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. We magnify you, God. We glorify your name, God. You are our all-sufficient one, the one who gives us everything we need. Hallelujah. The one who gives us the desires of our hearts. Hallelujah. When we delight ourselves in you. Everything I, use. I have everything. I have everything. And everything. Jesus. From the all-sufficient one I have. The great I am. Provides for me. The great I am. Provides for me. You are my strength when I am. Are my strength when I am. Your joy is my strength when I am. The great I am provides for me. The great I am. The greater I am, the better I am, is everything that I need. The greater I am, keep the I am, everything I need and more. sings my soul 
my Savior God to thee. Yes, she is. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great you are, how great you are. How great thou art, how great thou art. Glory to your name, Jesus. We are shared sight. We love on you, God. We adore you. Say yes and come on. We are you, God. We bless you with the fruit of our lips. We say how great you are, that you are a good father, that you are the father of likes who loves to give good gifts to his children. Hallelujah. We honor you, God, that you are above all. Hallelujah. You have created all, and you so show such grace and mercy to your creation. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Continually. We praise you. We know who you are, and we recognize that you are greater than anything we could ever imagine, that you are a spirit, and we come to you now worshiping you in spirit and in truth. We know there's no other who can come to you but through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 And we thank you for the gift that you've given to us. And we recognize what he did, hallelujah, so many years ago and setting a template for us to fellowship together, but also to remember the sacrifice that he made that ultimately led to the resurrection power that enables us to be made at peace with you again. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We love on you. We adore you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Peyton. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. What a time we have had in the presence of the Lord. We are still in the presence of the Lord. And I don't know about you, but it is wonderful. This is one of my favorite scriptures. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know who out there today is rejoicing. In the fact that you got another day to wake up and to bless the Lord with the fruit of your lips and by raising up holy hands without wrath or doubt and to acknowledge the fact that God has given you one more day. So we thank God. 
We give him a praise this morning. We bless his name. We acknowledge him. We, we thank him. We just bless him and we lift him up higher more and more in our conscience and in our awareness of him. We want to become more and more like him every day. And so we just give him a praise and a thanksgiving for today. We want to thank Elder Jamie for what, such a marvelous job. Every week he does a great job. And we are just blessed that he is a gift to the body of Christ, not only to For Him Covenant Church, but to the body of Christ. And if you ever get an opportunity to have him come to your church, you should, because he is a phenomenal worshiper. He's a phenomenal preacher. And I think you will really be blessed by having him come to your house. Also, we want to thank Sister Cherie and Sister Patrice, who do a phenomenal job on being our scribes every Saturday. They have done a great job. I want to thank my number one of my number one uh, advertisers. That's my main man, Jeff Scrivener. He does a great job along with he pushes the service. He gets it out there for us. And we thank God for him. We want to thank our elders, every last one of them. We could not do this without any of them. And we really appreciate them. And we are so thankful for each and every one, one of them. Along with, we got great ministers, great deacons. They all do a great job. Family, we are just blessed that we have great, great people as part of this community called For Him Covenant Church. And then our extended family, which is For Him Nation, which is a group of people that are that are outside of the DMV, maybe in different cities. I know we have, my sister is in, uh, from, is in Africa. We got friends in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we got friends in New York, and we got friends in different places. So we are, we are so thankful for those people who have become part of the For Him Covenant family. And we just call them For Him Nation because we, our goal is to be global, is to touch the world with this message. And you never know where these messages may go. So I want to thank you, our listening audience and our congregation via virtual service for spreading the gospel, for getting these messages out. What a great job you guys do in getting it out and sharing it with your friends and family members, co-workers, and just those people that you believe really need to hear a word. So this is, this is in case you don't know me, Pastor Peyton Gray, my wife, First Lady Martha Gray is on with us, and we're just excited to oversee this community of people in the season that God has given us for this. So we're just very thankful. So we're going to jump into communion. We're going to do communion. We're going to pray. Right. And I want to also acknowledge every person, every woman who has survived breast cancer. I know for a fact there are a couple of people that are part of our congregation that that have survived breast cancer. I know some other people. I see them on Facebook. But wherever you may be, if you're watching this, I want to salute you as a hero, a woman. And even some cases, there are men who have a rare form of breast cancer, but primarily women who survived breast cancer, who have fought back who are alive today, who have gone through that tremendous, tremendous battle uh, with breast cancer. I salute you and I acknowledge you. And I just want to, we're going to pray for you, but I just wanted to salute you this morning because you are a real hero. You are someone who has dared to fight for your life and have come out ahead and got your life back. So I thank you. And I thank you for your example. Thank you for your strength and your courage. Also, we want to also acknowledge that October 1st is usually breast cancer awareness, but we're celebrated through the first weekend by acknowledging everybody and letting everybody know. Also, I want to I want to just um, just let you know that this is also October is domestic violence month. It is the month where uh, resources are available and it really is available all year long, but it is specifically uh, put out there and for, I mean, and broadcast that if you need help or if you're going through some type of, of domestic violence, whether physical, verbal, emotional, get some help. Don't stay in a bad place. Don't stay in a toxic relationship, but go and get some help from somebody. There is resources and there are help. And if you need it, you can hit me up. You can go on Facebook and ask, do you know of any resources? And we do know some resources that you can that you can call and they have counselors and they have they have people who are experienced that can help you in those relationships. They are finding in COVID during this pandemic, COVID-19, divorces are up, people applying for divorces, people are having a lot of marital problems. Uh, I was watching on the news about strangulation. They are passing a law 
that does not allow strangulation to be a, uh, a, a misdemeanor, but a felony. Um, that means that the person who does that type of physical violence will get more time. Um, a, a, a misdemeanor would be something like 10 years, but this new felony bill would be 25 years if convicted. And so we we don't want and we don't believe that you have to stay in a situation where you feel at harm's way. Physical abuse is not allowed in the Bible. Uh, as God is not that is not God's will. Uh, physical abuse uh, emotional, psychological, these things, you know, get away from those to type of toxic situations. If you're in one, if you're in one and the two of you want to work something out, go get some counseling, go get, go to people who are, uh, equipped to help you. Um, and maybe you can salvage your marriage. Maybe you can't, but at least go talk it out, deal with it, find out what some of the root problems are so that you can be whole. Let's jump into communion. We're going to pray and then we're going to jump into communion. Um, and then we're going to get into and pick up the part two of the last series that we had on the inner man, which is very, very important because in the times that we live in, we must be girded up in our inner man. We have to understand what that terminology is. If you are going to walk with God, your inner man has to be stronger than your flesh. We live in the days, we live in days of great deception and great temptation. Uh, temptations are all around us. Everything is available and we can do it in the privacy of our homes. And we have to be girded up in the inner man, which is our mind, which is our will, which is our emotions, which is our understanding. We have to understand how these things, how the influences around us, because our flesh is just simply a connector toward what's going on inside of us uh, as to the world around us. So if we're, we've fed our flesh more than we feed or understand our inner man, then what happens is we will always give into. And remember, everything that we go, that we deal with is a battle in our mind. It is issues that are going on. It is the voices that of the society, of our flesh, of our conscience and of the word that comes at us and tries to end is pulling at us always. And so we kind of talked about that in introduction. So we want to look at part two today and this will be the conclusion of this part, but we'll be getting into some other very interesting concepts and ideas as we deal with the, these end times that we're in, these times that we are dealing with as we get closer to the second return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, we're not saying he's coming tomorrow, next month, the end of this year. I don't know when he's going to come back, but I do know he promised that he would come back. And many people have become skeptics and cynical about the second coming. But the Bible tells us in first Peter that a day is as a thousand years and as a thousand years is as a day. And don't think that the Lord is slow concerning his promise. He will come back. And we have been saying and we will continue to say it is better to be ready. And he don't come than for him to come and us not be ready. Go read this parable of the 10 virgins. Five were ready. Five weren't. And the five that weren't got left out. Now, you may not believe in a heaven or hell, but I believe in both of those concepts. They are biblical. I know people fight over me. You hear a lot of fighting, but guess what? I believe it. And I, I'm, and I always say, I would rather believe this book and become the best person that I can be than not believe this book and be average or even be below average. This book has changed my life. And I'm sure that it has changed a lot of people's lives if we'll be honest and if we will stick with it and get and go through the process to become better, to develop our character, to become whole, we will become better people. So I would rather believe this book and it not be right than believe it, than not believe it and be a bad type of person. So I'm going to stick with it. So if you with me, say amen. And we're going to jump into prayer. We're going to start this day off with prayer. And then we're going to get into communion. And then we're going to get into our scriptures and we're going to get into this. So stay with me today. I think we're going to go a little bit past 11, 11 o'clock. So I understand some of y'all got to leave. You got stuff you got to do. But thank you for being a part as far as you can be. So we just bless you and we thank you for the amount of time that you can give us today. But for those of you that are regulars and, and know and a part of the church, we're going to go a little bit past 11, hopefully not too far past. We've kind of, I've kind of condensed our notes so that we can make this real easy. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you. We give you the glory, the honor and the praise for all that you have done. We thank you for your presence which is ever present. And we welcome that presence into our situations, into our life. We open ourselves up to be sensitive to the spirit of God that lives inside of us. And we ask you, God, that, that you would continue to lead us and to guide us. Now, bless this time today. Thank you so much 
for the for the worship and for the praise that is here that is a part of us thank you for for those that are worshiping and ever are praying thank you god for the word of god that is going to come today to hopefully give us clarity to give us strength to give us encouragement to deliver us from us deliver us from those things that have been passed down to us god i thank you for every person that is a part of the service today and i just thank you that you would bless them thank you for those that will watch it later thank you for those who will hear it later and then be a part and begin hopefully to be stirred to be moved to be encouraged to be delivered to be set free from bondages and chains that are generational from bondages that are changed that are recent that we have taken on because of our disobedience but god we thank you and we just bless you right now and we give you the glory for this time now i decrease that you may increase I pray, Father, that they, the, those that are hearing would be anointed to hear this word and this word would take root and would have have its way in their life. So, Father, we thank you and we bless you and we give you the glory, the honor and the praise in Jesus name. Amen and amen. If you have your Bibles, we're going to do communion real quick. And this is the first Saturday of every month and every day and every first of the month, whether the first falls on a Friday, Saturday or a Sunday, that first weekend we celebrate Holy Communion. It is always the first weekend of every month. So whether we announce it or not, just know we're going to always have communion. Those that are part of For Him Covenant Church, you know this, we celebrate communion every first Saturday of every month. So we're going to always do that. So if you're not prepared today and you don't feel like you this is something for you to do or you want to do, I would tell you not to pull away, but to understand that communion is not about condemning you. Con communion is about reflecting. We just got out of a season of the, the fall feast, uh, trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles is coming up this uh, on the third, which is uh, which is today. And it runs through the ninth. And it is a celebration of what we've come out of. And so because it is a celebration for what we've come out of, the children of Israel were told to live in temporary housing to celebrate or to remember coming out of the exodus and going into the going through the wanderings and how god kept them in the wanderings and they would live in temporary shelters and it was the whole family celebration that the whole family would come and celebrate this time to talk about and remember from what you came so communion when we celebrate it, it is an examination of our lives it is looking at how we see ourselves how we see the world around us how we see the people that are in our world and are we are we being wrong in our judgments or our, our understandings of those people remember the bible tells us in first corinthians 11 paul tells people that you should examine yourself in verse 28 examine yourself so that you won't be sick so that you won't be are there areas in your life that need to change are there people in your life that may be toxic or are you toxic in some people's lives see we always say it's other people but sometimes we never look at ourselves so this is a time to always reflect and to remember jesus said as often as you do this do this in remembrance of me so remember means the, that i got to go back to the, my source and remember who puts me together who took my brokenness who took me and built me up and helped me to become and is helping me become whole so it is that's why we do communion it is not to condemn it is not it is a healing time it is a reflective time it is a time repentance is not a bad thing repentance is something that we all should do and it is something that all of us should partake of so that their healing begins with us. Beloved, 3 John 2, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. And the only way to do that is times of reflection, meditation on God's word, not just an empty meditation, but reflection and meditation on God's word that helps bring our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions into a place of wholeness, into a place of prosperity. Prosperity has the concept of being fat, being full, being healthy. And that's what that whole concept of being fat is all about, being healthy, being full, being, being, being prosperous. So we want to always go to a place where our soul gets help, gets delivered, gets gets through. And there may be areas that get revealed to you that you need to go to therapy, that a therapist can help you talk through some, some wounds from your, from your past, from your childhood, maybe disappointments and where you were dropped and hurt, you may need to go to therapist. And that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing because even the Bible tells us, confess your faults one to another. And in the days that we live in, God has raised up people called therapists that can help you and talk to you and get you delivered. So let's read the scripture, Matthew chapter 26 through 29. And it says, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, take this and eat it for this is my body. 
And he took the cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it anew with you in my father's kingdom. So father, we thank you today and we bless you. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise for first your broken body, which is the bread. And we partake of the bread, which you said is your body. And it was broken for us. And so we thank you that you were wounded, you were bruised, you were, you took on our sins that we would be considered sinless. So God, we thank you for your body and we bless it right now in Jesus name. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. We give you the glory, God. Hallelujah. We bless you. Now we partake of the cup of wine, which could be any type of juice, even water if you want, because it's all symbolic. And he said this, he said in verse 27, and he took the cup of wine and he gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. So we thank you for the blood, which, which is the new covenant which is for our sins. And we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. So God, we thank you that you shed your blood for each and every one of us. Some folk don't understand how anyone would dare die for them, but God, you dare die for us. And, and whether we understand it or not, we believe it to be so. We believe it as what the word says by faith. We believe it as a historical event. We believe it as being real. So God, we thank you for your blood. We bless it. Cover your people in your blood. Cover their homes, their finances, their loved ones. Cover them, God. We bless you and we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for your body, God. Hallelujah. We just take a moment and we just bask in the presence of God and in the fact that he shed his blood for us. He died for us. And we thank you and we bless you and we give you the glory and the honor for those things. God, we bless you right now and we give you the praise in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank God for the blood. I want to just share a scripture with you real quick. And when we're going to get in, we're going to go to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians today, because we want to finish our whole concept on the inner man. But we want to go to the book of Ephesians and maybe we have the scriptures from the last week, but our text is going to come from Ephesians chapter one, verse 18 and 19. But we're going to kind of go through a few scriptures that we used last week to be able to get into this concept on the inner man. This is inner man part two, but I want to read this and I want to read the Proverbs chapter 24, verse 17 and 18. And I want to read this specifically for, for something that I saw that kind of was a little disturbing to me. And it always is disturbing, especially I'm talking about from the perspective of saints, not the world. I, the world does what the world does. Um, and this is kind of why we need to be full of the word of God so that we know how to respond to the world. Um, as you know, uh, President Trump uh, contact, contracted COVID-19. And I was surprised at how many Christians were wishing bad on him. Like he did this, he did that. Now, whether he's doing that or not, I have no idea. But I think we have to be careful in our response in the world that people would understand, no matter who's in office, Democrat or Republican, that's not supposed to be what we are standing on. We are standing on the kingdom. We are kingdom people. And to see people say negative things about anybody, entertainer, whether you agree with them or not, listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 24. And how you feel about people, I think this needs to be in our hearing and in our, and in our spirit, because we got to understand promotion comes from God. The Bible says in Psalm I think 74, 75, promotion comes from the Lord. He raises up one, puts, he's the judge. The Bible says he is the judge. He raises up one and puts down. So ultimately 
God determines all things. Who's in, who's out, he determines all things. So this is what Proverbs chapter 24, uh, verse 17 says. Listen to this. I'm reading from the New King James. Listen to what this says. And then we're going to get into the inner man. It says, do not rejoice when your enemy falls. and Do not let your heart, verse 18, at least the Lord see it and it displease, displease him and he turn away his wrath from him. Proverbs chapter 24. Verse 17 and 18. I'm going to read it again from the New King James. Do not rejoice. It says, do not rejoice when your enemy falls and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles. At least the Lord see it and it displease him and he turn away his wrath from him. So we've got to be careful how we respond to whoever is in our life or whether it is a spouse, whether it is a, a, a uh, a friend or family member, we cannot allow our hearts to rejoice when they stumble. Remember this, beloved, that above anything, our whole heart throb should be the salvation of the world around us. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God. That is our assignment to give him glory. We we cannot, we have to be careful when we become fans and we we start wanting to root that our that our enemies be destroyed or something bad happened to them. Certainly we don't like everything that he has done or anybody has done, but I'm not going to root for his destruction or for his sickness or his death. And I'm not going to presume anything because I don't know. Now, sure, maybe I got better discernment than I do, but I think we need to be careful. And my prayer for him is that wherever he is, that this would draw him closer to the Lord and that maybe some folk in his inner circle really do need to be saved. And sometimes God has to bring people and bring them low so that they can see him. And maybe that's what he may need. I don't know, but I'm praying for him. I'm praying for Joe Biden. I'm praying for Kamala Harris. I'm praying for Pence. I'm praying for all of the Supreme Court justices. I pray for them daily that God would give them the wisdom to run this country and that God would reveal himself to him. Certainly in shutting down the whole world, God has started that process. So let us be careful that we don't return evil for evil, but let us return good for evil and let us always be prayerful about those who lead this country. And we don't have to agree with them. We don't even have to, you don't really have to like them for real, for real, but you do have to be careful and pray for them and pray for their, pray for their, pray for, pray for their wisdom, pray that God, that they would get to know God personally for themselves. And any type of concept or idea that is against Christ has to be torn down in their lives. So let's pray for them. Let's also pray for the peace of, of Israel because God says, blessed are those who do that. So let's continue to do that and let's watch out for it. So let's get into this thing on the inner man. Now, last time we met, we talked about we began to talk about the inner man. And one of the scriptures that we had was second Corinthians chapter four, verse 16 and chapter four, verse 16. It basically says, and I think they're going to put the scripture up. It basically says, therefore do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. So that lets us know that our outward man, the outward man, which is our flesh, is decaying every day. And as you get older, you realize it is definitely decaying day by day. It takes longer to lose weight. It takes longer to get back in shape. There's a lot that you got to do to keep this inner man in some type of working condition. But it is decaying every day. But our inner man is being strengthened day by day. The second scripture we gave you was Ephesians chapter number four, verse 19, Ephesians chapter three, verses 14 through 19. Ephesians chapter number three and verse 14 through 19. And I'm gonna read it to you. Ephesians chapter three, <clears throat> verses 14 through 19. It says, for this reason, and I'm reading from the New King James. So if it sounds a little different and you have the NLT, don't worry about it. Just read along. It says, for this reason, I bow my knee to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might. See, uh, wow, I lost myself. They be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. See, so we are inner man that he might grant you the strength in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded, what in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints, what is the width and the length and the depth and the height 
to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So we want to be filled with the fullness of God. Then we said, lastly, it was um, Romans chapter number seven, Romans seven. So we're going to read that too. Romans seven, just to give us a backdrop on where we came from. Romans chapter number seven, verses 22 and 23. Romans chapter number seven, verses 22 and 23. Romans chapter number seven, verse 22 and 23. It says, for uh, I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. So my inward man delights in the word of God. Um, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So there's a law of sin in my members. And then there is the law in my mind. Now, the mind and the heart are concepts that deal with the inside of man, the inside of man. And so because of that, it's not just literally my physical, my natural brain that we talk about or my physical heart, the cardia. But it is the inward man, all that constitutes the inward man. The inner man is that place where decisions are made, where values are held. This is the inner man. And so that's why we've got to always understand this concept of the inner man so that you and I will understand the necessity and the importance of building up the inner man. The spirit of God comes in our spirit. Now, understand something. Uh, First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 23 says, beloved, I, I pray that you be sanctified, holy spirit, soul and body. Now, you got to realize your spirit is the human spirit. And when you get born again, the, the God spirit comes into our spirit with our spirit, connects with our spirit and brings it alive. And that within that spirit, see, there's spirit and then there is our soul. Our soul is our mind, will and our emotions. And so our mind, will and emotions is a part of our soul, our mind. Again, the inside, the mind, the will, the emotions, the will is important because it is the basis for where decisions come from. So you may have the word of God, but if your will is has not been submitted or committed to the word of God and the things of God, which is the word of God, then what happens is you can become you do self will stuff. So you can be saved, but your will has not yielded or submitted to the word of God or which is which is where, where we get the terminology, the things of God, the, the word of God pre reveals to us the plan of God. The plan of God has to do with what God has purpose for us and how we should live our lives and how we should walk our lives out in everyday circumstances and situations. But our will is important that it must be yielded to that. So anytime you see a struggle in your life, ask yourself, have I really submitted my will to God, not just mentally ascended to know the scriptures, because you can know that God loves you, but you may not have totally absorbed and opened up and accepted God's love for you. You may know that God wants people saved, but you haven't totally yielded or allowed yourself to be a vessel to be used to get people saved. Oh, yeah, I know God wants people to be saved. Well, he needs you and I to be those vessels that help people get saved and to walk out the salvation that he gives us. So he gives us re our resp the responsibility of us. He doesn't give us the responsibility of everybody else. Even when our kids get grown and come to an age of accountability themselves, which is 12 in the Hebrew culture, but when they become like really start understanding like 18 and 21, then you don't even have responsibility over them. They have to make their own decisions. They have to do the things and they have to learn from themselves. So we, that's something, a whole nother message. But so just so that you understand. So when you begin to talk about the inward man, we understand and we begin to see we have the spirit. We have the soul and within the soul, we have the heart and in the heart there's understanding. Now, I want you to understand something. We have spirit, soul and body. So you have the soul. But even there are layers. See, understand hu the human being is so complex, but he's layered. Yes, we see the flesh, but then you have the soul, which is the mind, the will and the emotions. And then you have the heart. And then you have in within the heart understanding. And so these are things, these are concepts that we got to talk about. And I, I'm going to just go over them just briefly because I want you to understand something. I need you to realize that um, before knowing Christ, the condition of our inner man was a wasteland. Before knowing, before knowing Christ, the condition of our inner man was a wasteland. The spirit was dead, cut off from God. The heart had no hope. 
and the mind was vain, futile, and deprived. Does the scripture talk about this? Absolutely. Look at look at Ephesians chapter number two for a minute, because I just want you to just see this. Ephesians chapter number two. And um, excuse me for a second. I got to find this scripture. But Ephesians chapter number two. And I want you to see this. The the we were a wasteland, wet wasteland. We were we were no we were we were gone, man. And so verse 12 says this. Uh let's read verse 11 for a minute. I will read context. So it says, um, therefore remember, I'm reading from the New King James, therefore remember that you once gen once Gentiles in the flesh who were called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Now, that's imperative to understand that before Christ, you were a wasteland. You had no hope. You, you didn't even know you didn't even know what was promised you or what was given to you. That's why it says the covenants and the promises of God. See, these are all things that when you come when you come into a relationship, this is why you got to know God's word for yourself, because that way you begin to know what the covenants are. You have the Edemic covenant. You have the Noahic covenant. You have the new covenant, which we are in there. There are different covenants. There are like nine covenants in all the marriage. Marriage is a covenant. And we're not going to get into that right now, but that might be something we need to talk about because marriage is a covenant. It's an agreement with a contract and stipulations. There are there's authority that you have as a believer that many people don't even walk in because they don't understand. They still are alienated. They still are strangers. Why? Because we feed. We have a tendency to feed our flesh and our sense realm because we can see it, smell it, taste it, hear it, feel it. So because we we want to we want to do that, we get caught up in this whole concept of feeding, feeding our flesh more than we do our spirit man. So we have an awareness of God. We have an awareness of certain things of God. If we go to church on a consistent basis and we go to a church that you're being taught the word of God, but it's a lot deeper than that because you have to go beyond. That's why fasting and prayer is, ne is, ne is necessary because if you feed it enough and sometimes fasting, yes, it is food, but sometimes we sometimes it's cutting ourselves off from the society around us and all the voice and opinions and ideologies that's around us to be able to hone in on the word of God, to take some time and to really get in. That's why the Bible says study to show yourself approved. Second Timothy chapter three, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So this is our responsibility to study. So we, we see that, but go to Romans chapter one. So in Ephesians, we said, go back when you get a chance and read Ephesians chapter two in its, type, in, in, in its entirety. Read it because it says you, let me read this, show you this one thing. And you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. And this is verse, this is Ephesians 2, 1 and 2, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So anytime we begin to see a level of disobedience in our life, thank you for that. Anytime we begin to see a level of disobedience in our life, understand the influence of our old sinful nature is what is influencing our disobedience from what we know that God is doing or is doing. But let me tell you, let me say this, though. Sometimes our disobedience is because we're not rooted in the word of God. So when you're not rooted in the word of God, it is easier for you to do what you want to do when you want to do it. There is no like point counterpoint. So the, the world may come at you with a point. But the scripture, if it's in you, will give a counterpoint and bring balance to that and say, no, yeah, I might be able to do all things, but not all things are good for me, what the scripture says. And so I got to be able to understand what God's perspective is. And see, that's the thing about getting saved. And that's the thing about walking with the Lord. It is understanding that he has ways, Isaiah 55, verse, I, I believe it's 11. His ways are not our ways, nor his thoughts, our thoughts. So as high as the heavens are from as high as the heavens are from the earth, so are his ways above our ways. So we've got to be careful that we do not neglect what what his opinion and his ideas are on everything that comes into our life. That's why time is a valuable resource for the believer 
in any situation or circumstance that they are dealing it. If something is pressuring you to do it right now, more than likely it's not good for you. And you have to take your time and hear what the spirit of the Lord is and get the strategy of God. I'm just helping somebody and get the strategy from God and help and let God give you the pattern and the place and the things that you need to do in order for you to be able to navigate the world around you and the circumstances and the situations that come at you. And that's everything in life. And I don't want to get into it, but let's go over to Romans for a minute because I want you to see something. We're talking about the heart and we're talking about understanding because these are two things that we got to get. I want you to just see real quickly. So the heart, uh, Jeremiah 17, 9 says that the heart is desperately wicked. Who shall know it? The heart is desperately wicked. So Romans chapter one, Verse 21, listen to this. This kind of reiterates what I've been, what I just got finished capsulizing and saying. The heart is desperately wicked. Mark tells us, Mark 7 tells us that out of the abundance of the heart, all kinds of stuff comes out evil and, and, and adultery and fornication and murder. All of this comes out of us. So our heart is sick, it's desperately wicked. But Romans chapter 1, verse 21 says, because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Their foolish hearts were darkened because, I'll read it again, because although they knew God, Romans chapter one, verse 21, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. See that? professing to be wise, they became fools. See that? So their hearts were darkened because they, although they knew God, you can see God, the, 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 the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. There is nothing around you that you can't look at that will not show off and show you God. And because of that, you and I got to realize and we got to understand that now we have to begin to make sure that we're thankful to the creator, to God, for all that he has done, good and bad. That's why this is imperative that you understand the importance of knowing why your inner man has to be built up. And so we've got to realize and we got to know that the only way that we can get through. Now, put this one up for me, Cherie. Uh, Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. I talked about it before. So they knew about God. They weren't thankful to God. And because they thought they was trying, they were out trying to outsmart God, which you can't. They became fools. And when you look around at people and listen to and, and hear what a lot of people are saying, you're going to hear, and especially if you follow the line of thought and a lot of thinking, how foolish it is. We can see liars a mile away. Yes, if you stay in this world, you can discern when people are lying and when people are wrong. But again, you have to be careful that it's not for us to bring judgment on them or to pronounce bad things on them. It's going to naturally come. When you just walk away from and walk out of God's uh, God's ways, what's going to happen is the judgment is going to automatically fall on you. So the thing you should be praying for is God have mercy on these people, have mercy, save these people, use the, use this situation or circumstance, turn it around that they can see you and know you for themselves, not to pronounce and be negative and be, be nasty and be mean and be mean spirited. Remember, you never return evil for evil. You only return good for evil. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12 says that the word of God is living and powerful, and sharper than any two edged sword piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joint and marrow. And watch this. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See that? So if our heart is darkened, when we get into the light of God's word, then we're going to be able to understand and we're going to be able to see where the motivation for some of the things are that we are thinking about or contemplating. The absence of the word leaves a person's inner man or heart or mind darkened so that we can't see or know God's word. Psalm 119, I think is 111 says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Oh, how powerful that is. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And it is important for us to realize the necessity of having God's word, of reading God's word every day, of meditating on God's word so that the word of God dwells in us richly because we are, we are, and we encounter temptation on a daily basis, on an hourly basis. We are tempted to do something that we know we shouldn't say something 
do something, look at something, walk in something, deal with somebody, say something crazy. Because understand, as you become a light to those that are in darkness, people are going to come to you and they're going to ask you questions and they're going to be looking for a word from the Lord. Because as you live this and as you're obedient, God will begin to raise you up and use you because you're a light to those that are in darkness. So we want to understand that the more I get into this, the more I grow in my understanding. Remember also that David said in Psalm 51, verse number 10, he said, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Creating me, Psalm 51, 10, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew the King James says, new King James says, and renew a right spirit within me. So that's got to be our prayer to give us a clean heart. Um, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22, it says, let us draw near with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Put that up, put Hebrews chapter number 10, verse 22. And let's look at that for a minute. We want a clean heart. We want a clean conscience because we want our conscience to be able, our conscience is also a device given to us by God to let us know when we are wrong. But see, if you sear your conscience and live the, and live a life or live a lie consistently, you will sear your conscience. You will cause your conscience to become numb and indifferent. And many times what happens is we sin so much as a society that our consciences become numb. How, how can a person kill a four-year-old baby? How can people just aimlessly just beat folk up and fight at the drop of a hat? Because their consciences are telling them it, they're becoming slowly seared from society and from disobedience to God? How can we just do the type of stuff that we see every day? How can a policeman just shoot an innocent man or a woman or beat somebody up just because of their skin? Because we have become, our consciences have become seared, have become callous, have become hard. But look at what Hebrews chapter 10 uh, verse 22 says, look at this. It says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Then it says, verse 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. See, and, and, uh, see, clean body is that washed with the word, water of his word, that our bodies, which are supposed to be temples to be used by God, have been, have been demarcated through the word of God. Thy word is truth. So therefore, we have to hold on to the truth of God and use that truth to cause us to be separate. You can't literally separate yourself from the world. You just can't do that. Because as you can see during the COVID-19, that people are going crazy without physical or social contact. So you got to have social contact with people. The issue is what differentiates us from other people. It is the motivations. It is the mindsets. It is our conscious inside that is functioning and properly pro is functioning properly in all of the things that we do and all of the things that we say and all of the places that we go, how we carry ourselves, how people can see something different in us. It is because the word of God is operating in our life and it, it is helping us to maintain a posture internally that is exemplified externally by how we live our lives, by how we treat people. See, that's why your conscience has got to be pure. Our hearts have got to be pure. Our minds have got to be pure. Pure is just more is a is a moral word. It is a word that says that there is a standard inside of you and I that helps us to maintain a differentiation between us and the people that are around us who are lost. So that's why Jesus says you can't take a light and put a put up something over it and cover it. The light has to be seen and the light of the word has got to be internalized in us and then lived out externally through us so that people can see that. So we want to understand that it is imperative that God promises us in the new birth that we would receive the spirit of God, that he would come and he would dwell inside of us. Now we've got to understand and we're almost finished. So stick with me. We've got to understand that understanding helps us draw conclusions about right and wrong. We're talking about our heart and we're talking about right below our heart or within our heart is understanding. So we want to have this concept of understanding because it is needful for us to make decisions. And what we say is understanding draws conclusions about right and wrong and understanding makes distinctions and forms opinions. I'm going to say that again. Understanding draws conclusions about right and wrong and 
understanding makes distinctions and forms opinions. See that? Understanding draws conclusions about right and wrong and understanding makes distinctions and forms opinions. Now, that's that's a, that's a need and necessity. Now, we're right at where we want to be, because once you have this understanding, that understanding is just not about information. Understanding is about understanding and seeing is about about God revealing things to us internally. Um and when you begin to understand, yes, you need a certain level of information. It is just not information alone, because how many of you know you can have information, but not have the insight or revelation necessary to make the right decision? You have all the information and all of the information and conclusion may line up because what happens is you can have all the information. But then what is God's opinion? What is God's what is God asking you to do? And that's where you need revelation. And that's where you got to be able to see. Elijah told his uh, 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 um, armor bearer, Gehazi, he said when Gehazi looked out and saw all of the, the army that was against him and had surrounded Elijah's house or I think Elisha's house. And he ran to his master out of fear. He said, Elijah said, Lord, help him to see. See, he saw in the natural, but he didn't see in the spiritual. And, and when Gehazi's eyes were open, he said, there are chariots of fire all around the armies, even that are surrounding us. And he said, there are more with us than there are with them. And many times we don't see we don't see spiritually. We see what carnal eyes carnal means after the flesh. We see based on what it is or isn't as far as against us, as opposed to seeing God with us and seeing more with us than there are with them, seeing God's perspective and God's plan and how God is going to play this out. Remember, in Hosea chapter four, verse six, it says, God does nothing until he first reveals it to his servants, the prophets. He He will let you see. That's why in when Jesus was walking with his disciples, he said, see, they have eyes to see, but can't see. They have ears to hear, but can't hear. See, because they were always looking in the natural. They never saw God's plan. Remember in Matthew, I believe it's Matthew 16, where Jesus is telling his disciples, who do men say that I am? And he's asking them and they're giving them all these revelations. Well, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he says, flesh and blood. Remember that? Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father, which is in heaven. And then Peter turns around when Jesus says, I have to be crucified. I have to be beaten and I have to be go through all of this suffering. And I got to die. And he says, be, be it not so. That is not going to happen. We're not going to. And he says, get behind me, Satan. And he calls Peter. Now, Peter just had this great revelation about who Christ was. And Peter and Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, for you are more concerned about the things in the natural than the things in the spirit. And I'm kind of paraphrasing it. But that's basically what he was saying. He said, you care more about what you about the natural than you do about what this what's spiritual. And so when you begin, when you really begin to grow and God really begins to realize, you begin to see things from God's perspective. So I want to get into these last two scriptures, then we're going to be finished. So let's just jump right into Ephesians chapter one, verse 19. Let's go there. Ephesians chapter one, verse 19. Cherie, if we can go there and then we're going to be finished for today. Thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, then we had a lot to get through today, but thank you so very much. My wife and I are really happy. Thank you. Thank you. Ephesians chapter one, verse 18 and 19, because I want you to understand the necessity of, 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 of what we're trying, of, of what having your inner man has strengthened. And Paul gives it to us in Ephesians chapter one, verse 18 and 19. And listen to what it says. Uh, Let, let me go up to verse 17. Should we go to verse 17? I'm sorry. Ephesians chapter one, verse 17, 18 and 19, because I want you I, I want you to see this one. This one clause that is necessary. That's a necessity for us to get these last three points. It is simply this. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Ephesians chapter one, verse 17 through 19, says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom, practical application of knowledge the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. See, that he would give you wisdom, the practical application of knowledge and revelation, pull back. So when you walk in the practical application of the word, God will pull back and give you revelation of him. That is so important, of him, of him, what he wants. Now, let's look at this. 
the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to uh toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power uh oh uh oh so we want to know so here's the three things i want us to talk about i want us to talk about hope value and power hope value and power but we see it in the what's what is what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the surpassing greatness of his power now we've about finished we we are we're on we're on that back stretch the last 100 so now check this out so what is the hope hope of his calling hope of his calling gives us purpose and direction that we may know what is the hope of his calling see when i understand the hope of his calling it gives us purpose and direction hope gives us purpose and direction a reason to move forward in the lord and mature it provides vision for the future did you see that hope then is purpose and direction when i understand what his calling is calling means he summons me in to do what he gives me purpose the reason why god created the situation the reason why god created me and direction and gives me a reason to go forward the reason why a lot of people are stuck is they have no hope because they don't understand calling in its totality they think calling is being an apostle a prophet evangelist pastor and teacher that's all we focus on or preaching no calling is being summons into his presence i hope you get it that's why the presence of the lord is imperative to get into his face the word to get and have an open heart to receive because there he will give you purpose and direction and then he will give you a reason to move forward in the Lord. And he and it will give you, it will give you also cause to mature. So that's hope. Number two. And once we get finished with this, we're gonna be done, family. Watch this. But get this. Then then he says, We want to know what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is this? Value. You got to understand that you and everybody around you has value. And when you understand that there is value and that there is that we mean something to him, that causes us again to be obedient to the Lord. Many people don't think because they, they don't think that they mean anything to God because they're not at a certain moral place or they are not where pastor is or first lady is or the el no it is crazy no you have value in who you are you have value in the fact my god i feel the holy ghost right here you have value in the fact that you are who god created you to be and when you begin to take on and realize that that has value to god because there are places that you can go that i can't go there are things that you have inside of you that i don't have i am not the complete package i don't have anything first lady doesn't have everything the elders don't have everything you you in and of yourself are valuable to God and by necessity, he calls you into his presence to give you your assignment and your marching orders to move in the places where God calls you to move. We have got to get people are unhooked from always just running after apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. My God, the church is more than just apostles, prophet. They're important and there's a necessity, but those are gifts. See, those are gifts that God gives to the church, but there are so many different gifts in all of us. Listen, I could not be successful. We cannot be successful in pulling off and putting these scriptures on if it's not for Sister Cherie or Minister Patrice. We could not do this without uh, Elder Jamie. We could not do this without Kiva, uh, Elder Kiva or Elder uh, or Debbie. We could not be successful if it wasn't for, for administrative uh, duties and responsibilities by Elder Martha. We could not be successful if it wasn't for uh, Elder Elder uh, uh, Elder Sister Kelly. So every person, every joint supplies. And see, that's where you got to understand you are valuable. Don't let the devil fool you in thinking that there is no value and then takes you and pulls you out of the community of faith because you don't believe that there's any value in you because you do not feel like you are worth anything because you're not where you're supposed to be guess what all of us didn't just get here overnight it takes years it takes consistency it takes continue to walk 
to grow in understanding and knowledge. You are valuable to God. You are Psalm 139. I'm going to close on this. Psalm 139. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And if God didn't have, have no value, he wouldn't put you in the earth. He wouldn't put you in here and he wouldn't be using you today in, in who you are. Let me give you this last one. Power. The power of the Holy Ghost. What is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us? What is that? Power. This is his power in us and is surpassingly great. In the same, it is the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead and it works in us to achieve the foundations and a them. So that means that God gives you the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Beloved, don't believe all the cynics that want to tell you that God didn't raise from the dead. They want you to. Why? Because if there is no power, if Jesus didn't raise from the dead, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, then we're a bunch of fools. We just running around here doing stupid stuff and we might as well just go on and do what we want to do. No, the power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is the same power that God gives you to give you hope and to give you value. It is the same value that raised you from that raised him from the dirt from the tombs and it is the same it is the same power that enables you to get out of any situation any circumstances it is the power that now enables you to become and to overcome those things that and those obstacles that the devil may try to put in your feet it is the same power that god gives you in order to be able to accomplish the things that god says you can accomplish if you have a dream, don't give up on your dream. It is the power of God. Don't let the enemy short circuit your power, your dream. Don't let the devil short circuit your value. Don't let him minimize how great you are. It is the same power that will enable you to overcome yourself and you and the sins that you that, that so be easily set you. Don't short circuit your, your power by disbelief and lack of faith. You've got to, oh, you can overcome. There is uh, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. It is the power of the Holy Ghost that comes in. I feel my help right here. It is the power of God that's inside of you that is moving and helping you. How do you think you got to where you are today if it wasn't for the power of God that's living inside of you? My God, beloved, I'm trying to tell you, the inner man, feed your inner man. Don't starve him. Give your inner man what he needs, the time necess necessary in the presence of God, the time necessary in the word of God, feed your inner man. This is your boy, Pastor Peyton, First Lady Martha. We love you. We appreciate you. Build that inner man up. He wants to be built up. Man, I, I love you guys so much. And I want you to know there's hope, there's value, and there's power. Thank you so much. Hope, value, and power. And those are the three things you can walk away with from today, along with all the scriptures. Go back and read those scriptures. Go back and understand how, how, the, how it is necessary for us to be able and the necessity for us to to need the need the needful necessity for us to be able to strengthen that inner man galatians chapter five remember that go back and read that so that you can understand when your flesh is coming out of balance but you got to be able to feed him and to transform him through the word of god that is where your strength comes from that is where your value comes from so hey this is your boy pastor Peyton. let's pray i'm gonna pray a prayer today if you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, by all means, pray this prayer. But I want to pray for those today who don't see themselves as being valuable. And there are a lot of people that are out there that don't see themselves as valuable. This is important because I believe the Holy Ghost is moving in the lives of some people out there today. And it's necessity that we pray for them. Um, don't allow yourself to be around people that don't see who you are, will label you and say negative things about you and say stuff that is not true according to the word of God. Don't hang with people that are toxic, that call you out your name, and that you allow them to call you out your name. That is not what God intended. Your value is important. Your calling is important. We cannot do anything. There are problems that you are specifically designed to solve. Did you hear what I said? There are problems that you have been specifically designed to solve, and you have to fight through so that you can solve those problems, so that you can help the rest of us get through too. So Father, let's pray this prayer. Pray this prayer for you. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you right now as a sinner and I ask you to come into my heart. I believe that God raised Christ Jesus from the dead. And because I believe that, I believe that I am now a child of God. Holy Spirit, come alive in my heart. Lead me and guide me in all truth. Give me a hunger and thirst for righteousness and for God's holy word. Lead me to the place where I can go to be fed and developed and strengthened. 
Father, I thank you and I bless you right now for this moment. For this moment now, I am a child of God. Now, the praise prayer with me. Say, Father, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I was created with value. I was created to exemplify you and all that you have, all that you created me for. There is no problem or nothing that you've put in my way that you cannot help me overcome. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have value. I am important. I've been called for such a time as this. So I thank you and I bless you, Lord. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. So if you pray those prayers, God bless you. And we love you and you are valuable and you are called and you are special to God. And we believe that for him coming to church. And we believe that every human has a purpose and a plan and God has something for them. And it's our job to help them come alive and to, in terms of awakening, that calling, that purpose in their life on a day-to-day basis. So me and First Lady, we thank you. We bless you. Our elders, our ministers, we bless you and we thank you. Hey, look, do two things. Don't forget our Thanksgiving baskets. Don't forget if you know a family that needs a Thanksgiving basket, you can now go online. The applications have been uploaded. You can uh, put a family in, but please make sure all of the information is correct because that is the most important part. You can put their name in, we'll put it on the list, but if we don't have the right contact information to be able to get them the food, it's gonna be hard. So if you're gonna pick it up for them, make sure you fill it out, you put all the right information on. So please make sure you do that. Make sure you you sow a seed for a basket and also make sure that you fill out one for a family that may need a basket. There are a lot of people that are gonna be one. And let me tell you something, don't let pride stop you. Don't let, if you need one, get you one. The other thing, if this has been a blessing, don't forget for him to pay your tithes and your offerings. Stay faithful, stay committed. You've been doing a great job so far, and we just appreciate that. Lastly, but not least, make sure you pass this to your friends and family members and co-workers, wherever they are, that they would understand the necessity of this message, the inner man. And then don't forget to be a subscriber on YouTube. Our numbers are going up. I said it Tuesday night. Our numbers are going up. So let's continue to be subscribers to YouTube. Hey, this is Pastor Peyton Gray, the For Him Covenant family. We bless you. We thank you. We love you guys so much. You guys have a great day. Enjoy the weekend. It's going to be a great time. We bless you right now in Jesus' name. On behalf of Pastor and First Lady and all the elders and ministers and deacons, we say thank you. God bless you. For Him Nation, we love you. Peace out.